Different scoliosis treatments will lead to different results. When we look at the treatment of scoliosis, we know there's very two distinct paths. And then when we look at scoliosis, we understand that scoliosis is not a curable problem. It is a progressive problem, meaning that it's virtually guaranteed to progress over time. It's gonna be either gonna progress rapidly in a adolescent while they're growing and developing potentially, or it can progress slowly as an adult resulting with compression or as a result of gravity. But because it's a progressive condition, scoliosis cannot be cured. There is no cure for it. And in most cases, we have no idea what even caused it. But even though it's not curable, we know scoliosis is highly treatable. And especially for patients that actually treat the scoliosis early in life. For these patients that have uh, that are diagnosed, patients are diagnosed with scoliosis, choosing their treatment approach to commit to is really the most important thing in terms of which way you're gonna go. And there are two specific ways. I call these the main treatment approach or the most common treatment approach people who have to choose between is something called traditional treatment versus something called conservative treatment. And what's interesting is that there's believers and non-believers on both sides. And the truth is, it's just how you're choosing to to manage your scoliosis over time. Each approach offers a completely different potential outcome. As scoliosis is an incurable thing, we mean we can't take scoliosis and cure it because we don't know what to cause it, your treatment decision in terms of what you're choosing can have far-reaching effects in terms of not how it affects you today, but how it can affect you 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. When we look at traditional treatment options, we know there's very limited options. And I like to say that the traditional treatment approach is a non-functional approach, which will make sense as we go through what the options are. When we look at this, the first thing we understand that the most common treatment approach in the traditional approach is actually nothing. They call this observation. They just observe and they watch and they wait and see what's going to happen. And what ends up happening, unfortunately, many, many times, it's curves progress. Now, how far they progress to and how quickly they progress to is, again, unknown. We can't predict exactly how fast or how big a curve will become, but almost all curves will progress at some point in this person's life. Now, traditional treatment options normally tells patients to watch and to see what happens, especially if they have a mild scoliosis. And while the curve is mild, this is when the curves can be mostly treated easily because the curves are smaller, they're easier to reduce, they're much easier to treat. But traditional treatment option says, well, we have no strategy to treat mild scoliosis. And we find it not important because if a curve is mild, the only treatment they have to deal with or try to reduce curves is very, very invasive. So ver therefore, the severity of the curve doesn't outweigh the severity or the risk of the treatment, which I'll talk about in a second. So therefore, they say do nothing. Okay, so therefore they recommend wait and see what happens. If curves progress into the severe stage, then they recommend that these patients consider surgery. So it's like they do nothing and then they consider surgery. Um, there's nothing in between to try to prevent surgery. And the only exception to that rule is going to be a patient that's actively rapidly growing in their pubescent growth spurt. In this stage, they may recommend a Boston brace to try to curb how fast the curve is progressing, but that's only in a very small window of patients. Every other patient is told just to watch and see what happens. And then if your curve becomes severe, then that's when we'll consider surgery. Now, this traditional treatment tends to funnel patients to surgical fusion, which is costly, invasive, risky, and can lead to lots of a whole host of negative side effects and a lot of things that we don't know what could happen 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from the actual date of the surgery. It is by definition removing function. It is a non-functional approach. Now, conservative approaches to scoliosis, the treatment is very, very different. And the reality is that most scoliosis cases can be treated non-surgically. This is especially true if they're treated proactively. If this whole watch and wait thing is abandoned and we treat curves, sooner, we can definitely treat them more effectively conservatively. I like to call this a functional approach or a chiropractic-centered approach. And the reason why, because we want to treat curves as soon as the curve is diagnosed, when it's small as possible, because we want to preserve function of the spine. And by preserving function means we want the spine to be as straight as possible, not just not surgical. We want it to be as straight as possible because we know a patient with a straighter spine has more function in the spine. And small curves 
before they become severe, have less spinal rigidity. And the less rigid the spine is, the easier the curve is to reduce. Also, as the curves become more rigid, they normally um, tends to increase the risk of progression, making the spine much less responsive to any type of treatment. So treating curves mild when they're more flexible, keeps it makes it gives us a better chance to reduce and also keeping the curve more flexible also reduces the risk of progression. We know as these curves progress, they're also more likely to progress. So therefore, there's no reason to wait. You're just wasting valuable time reducing a small curve and making it smaller. There's really no harm. If you take a 20 degree curve and you make it 10, there's no harm there. But leaving a 20 degree curve and letting it progress to become 50, now we're looking at much more invasive treatment, which can be life altering. So therefore, conservative treatment, since we're not using screws and rods to install on people's spines, we're using a combination of chiropractic specific scoliosis care, we're using types of physical therapy, we're using corrective bracing, we're using rehabilitation, and these things are all coordinated in a way so therefore we can impact the scoliosis on every level. Spinal fusion, like I said, by definition, is a non-functional approach because it's taking joints of the spine that are designed to move and actually fusing them. And it fuses them from the most tilted vertebra from above to the most tilted vertebra below, and it fuses them into one solid bone using bone grafts, pedicle screws, and titanium rods. And these rods are designing to fuse that area so it no longer moves. Most commonly in that area, most all the discs are completely removed and this disrupts the normal spinal function. And it can, since this area is no longer moving, it becomes non-flexible. This non-flexible component starts to affect everything above and below in a negative way, which can lead to more de spinal degeneration and accelerated damage to those areas right above and below the surgery. And since they can't fuse the entire spine, those areas not fused can still progress, it can still worsen. So curves can still progress even post-surgery. Now, the benefits of non-surgical approach is that we keep flexibility and movement of the spine. Our goal is to preserve normal function as much as possible. We want to reduce the curve on a structural level using a, a chiropractic structural approach. And these things are designed to address postural deviations related to the scoliosis, but it also, we're not just limited to a chiropractic approach, especially in a complete or, or a, a well-rounded scoliosis approach. We're using core strength and physical therapy to help optimize surrounding muscles in a more balanced way. We're using corrective bracing to augment the corrective chiropractic care and the physical therapy to help move the spine into a corrected position and help remodel the, the body and posture to look more symmetrical. During this time, we also prescribe home exercises to help patients further stabilize their spines for long-term results and their spines become stronger. And these are things that they can continue to do even when we wean patients from active treatment. And basically, conservative treatment is proactive, meaning the goal is to prevent progression, to reduce the curve and while it's actively progressing. So therefore, you don't need surgical in, uh, treatment in the future. And because it's a functional approach, you can maintain normal function of the spine. You don't have the fear of having rods and screws in your spine for the rest of your life, which could possibly cause more future complications. So really, I want patients and their families to fully understand all the treatment options available to them and how important this decision is, maybe making an informed decision whether you're going to go down the more traditional approach or more of a conservative approach. Because really, once you start going down one of these approaches, they can offer really where you're going to end up. You know, the old saying that if you, if, you know, if you, if, if you have a hammer, everything's a nail. Well, a lot of times, if you're looking at a surgical type of approach, you're pretty much going to end up with a surgical recommendation at some point, more than likely, because as these curves progress in adolescent or they progress in the adult stage or progress later stage in life, they become more severe. They start causing more problems. And therefore, normally at some point, they're recommended some type of surgical intervention where therefore treating, treating scoliosis conservatively can hopefully prevent that recommendation from ever happening because you're proactively managing the curve from the minute it's diagnosed. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.